All right, Kyle, that is a birthday present well received, my friend. The Avs dismantle the Dallas Stars. Let's talk about it. Locked on Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked on Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, everybody, welcome to the Lockdown Avalanche Podcast. We're part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Chris Maselli. With me, as always, is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. Thank you for tuning in and making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. Make sure you're following us on our social media outlets, LLP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, X, Lockdown Avalanche on Instagram, and threads, questions, comments, concerns, and opinions, Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us over on our YouTube channel, Hit subscribe, get notified when a new show goes live, and make sure you are subscribed to our subtext as well. Link to that is in the show notes below. And when you do, you chat with Kyle and I one-on-one. We get your opinions on everything Avalanche, which we share on this very episode, like we will do a little bit later. Um, All right, man, let's dive into this game. Pretty much going to be all about the game between the Avs and the Dallas Stars, a 5-1 to victory for the Avs. You just seem to have their number this year. Uh, you, you have moments where you know Dallas looks good because they're a good team, uh, but but when you play, to, when you get to the end, when you play that tape to the end, so far this year it's been it's been Avs really have the number uh, overall of Dallas, and and it was it was evident in this game too. Uh, the first period, I, I, I the Avs were up, but I didn't love it. I didn't love it. It started out good. A, a, a really fast game for both teams. I'm sure the back-to-back caught up to Dallas somewhat later on in the game. Um, but, you know, Dallas got the first goal. And then the Avs, once again, score multiple goals in a row against Dallas. And they win this one 5-1. to one. What's your thoughts on it? Yeah, five unanswered. What a – and I'm, I'm glad that you brought up Stankoven. Everybody got that name. Of the front of your mind uh, yesterday yeah, yeah yeah he 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 had his moment and then ladies and gentlemen people of all ages joel give you ronta <laughs> with the revenge yes. oh yeah the... <laughs> it was it was sweet justice and after that it, everything kept rolling and i i like what you mentioned like the first period not liking it i don't think i liked any i don't i was not a big fan of the play the entire game it was just it felt like a preseason game Honestly, beginning it to was, end. Yeah, it, it was I, I thought the abs looked good. I mean, yeah. we scored five goals. They they look they look good, but they Dallas was pre, I feel like the Avalanche were ready for this because hmm. Dallas presses you. And the one thing that I love that they do that I wish more teams would do is when you know you're you're the offensive team, you got you got your, your puck, so you go behind your own net just to settle things down, get a line change. Dallas has somebody on you pressuring you, going behind the net, forcing you out to do something with the puck. They don't stand in front of the goalie and just wait for you to make the decision and then react. I love that. I saw I them love dropping that they too. It. Yeah. It, it, I, I, I wish some more teams would do that. but um, And it seems like the Avalanche knew that it was coming, or if they didn't, they adjusted to it very well. Because the Avs were playing a a game where where they needed to, their passes need to be needed to be like I don't want to say you always want your passes to be crisp that they had to be where they were supposed to go and sh- they had some issues again in in the the defensive zone trying to get clears I, I give a lot of credit to Dallas in, in creating those but overall I thought Dal um, excuse me the, the Avalanche played a very good reactive game to what Dallas was trying to force them into many mistakes. And I thought the avalanche did a really good job of, of of not caving into that because it could have been a disaster the way that Dallas defends you. So you're telling me Colorado is better than Dallas in the season series and Arizona is better than Colorado. So Arizona is actually the better team in the central judging by play. Now it is one of those, And honestly, yeah, the defense that would probably be be the big stinky thing to walk out of this game. But top to bottom, this was a good effort by the Avs. This was, mm-hmm. it wasn't pretty. Um, you saw a lot of players losing their footing. 
it did it got chippy but it didn't amount in penalties the whistles the, it was not a yeah. factor no it was you saw some pushing and shoving and extra curriculars on the goalie but nothing got out of hand so that was you like to see that and again this was billed as a playoff matchup and you like what you see if that's what this is going to be and again we talked about it on yesterday's episode the everydayers know Natushkin's on the way back so this team will look better and you like what you saw production wise top to bottom Mm-hmm. And on and a little fun fact for all my uh, like-minded bitter Avs fans, Zach Parise and Jonathan Drewin had more minutes than Matt Duchesne. Really? Why is that? Where, where's my where's the stats here? What so so say that again? So Zach Parise had 16, 12, you know, okay. And and who was the other one you said? Jonathan Drewin. Drew in at 1654, and they played pretty much played on the same line. And let's see, Duchesne had 1546. Huh. You know, and, and you look at you look at wow, you look at Dallas's time on ice. That is very, very even across yeah. the board. Yeah. And they do that. They're they're a deep team, right? You know, so so they roll four lines out. You would think when you're down five to one. Um, maybe going in the third that that it would be a little bit more top heavy, or they might have just thrown in the towel, and and you got that vibe that that they kind of wore. Like, hey, we'll 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 give it a little bit of push in the beginning of the third, see if we can get something, and you got five to two with a whole period to go. I think once it got to like you know fifteen minutes left in in the period, and nothing was really happening, maybe they just took their foot off the gas a little bit, and that's why you see time on ice very evenly spread out for for Dallas. I'm sure that's that's the norm for them, but when you're down by that this much, you usually see your top lines get a little bit more minutes. And this is why we every episode it feels like post game pre game we preach depth scoring, keep going, keep pushing that extra gear. This 5 to 1 win afforded Nathan McKinnon 19 minutes. Oh, just under 20 of that's a day time off. on ice. At 20 minutes and 37 seconds for Miko Rantanen. Mm-hmm. Kale McCarr was still in his 23 minutes, but if you want to rest your stars and we keep talking about you can't keep riding that top line, well, if everybody contributes, you get the, you get to take that third period and you don't have to be double shifted. You don't have to try and win the game in the third period. You could right. let all four lines roll and that's your reward. And maybe this is something the Avalanche could see and say, hey, you know what? That was fun, and I don't feel as winded rolling into Chicago. You do it again, and maybe it's a 6-1, 7-1 game. And then you well, have the same kind of minutes in the, I hate to say the word, but load management. Mm-hmm. But if you do what you're supposed to do, you could roll the lines how they're supposed to be rolled out, and it's not so taxing on your stars. Well, the last game that the abs had like this where where you could really i don't want to say you know i want to use the term like relax but i don't mean yeah. like relax you know what i mean like comfort yeah. have comfort in in like the 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 end result is really not in doubt when you're heading into the third it's been about a month yeah um i'm just looking back at the schedule and your your wins that were by more than one goal more recently was the Canucks game that was three to one so you're not you know no. feeling the Capitals worst lead game. in hockey yeah exactly the, the Capitals game you won that game six to three but you got two empty netters so that was that game was not in 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 doubt um then going back to that January 26th against the Kings you won that one five to one so it's been it's been over a month where yep. you've had a game where you can really just feel real good that we really put in that, you know, to use the term full 60. Um, although I don't, yeah, sure. If you want to use it, go ahead. But like I said, I didn't really like the first, not that they were trying. It was just Dallas really had some good momentum going in, in the first. Um, and I, it just, it just feels a lot that that second period uh, was what won this game for the abs. And yeah, while it looks good, a five to one score, um, it was, 
a, a chunk of time in that second that really just lifted the abs. And it was two goals back to back. The second one, that Nathan McKinnon goal, where how he gets behind everybody, not on a breakaway. There's just a battle against the boards. It pops out to him. He's behind everybody already. It's done. There's yeah. no chance to stop that. And he he just makes a couple moves uh, right in front of Ottinger and pots a goal. Uh, I, I thought it was good. like you said it earlier, like uh, top to bottom. You got goals. Uh, we'll bring bring up the stats here quickly. Uh, Cogliano got you a goal and an assist. Wagner got you an assist. Uh, Drew Wen, who was playing on a lower line, got you an assist. Kiviranta with the goal. So you got you got points from, and obviously, you know, McKinnon and Lekkinen and Rantanen all had two points each. So yep. That's and what you, you had you had two points out of everybody on the top line, and you had a good power play that you capitalized on, which is mm-hmm. rare for the Avalanche. And then you had an atrocious power play towards the end of the game that you didn't. So mm-hmm. it's also something to clean up. But this is Honestly, this is a great effort against a great opponent. I don't. I know it's on the second half of a back-to-back, but this is what you have to do. You don't make right. excuses. We don't make excuses for losses. If you get a W, if you get two points, take it. The Avalanche yep. need it. Absolutely. Uh, Kale McCarr set a franchise record that, if he hangs around for a while, could likely never be broken. This could be a Gretzky-esque record that he's got we'll talk about that coming up next first let's hear from game time because you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports music comedy and theater events near you with killer last minute deals all in pricing views from your seat and the best price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets some of the things that we love about game time like we said, the view from your seats is absolutely stellar the way that they incorporate it into the app. You have the all-in pricing. The price you see is the price that you pay. And download the Game Time app, create an account, use the code locked on for $20 off of your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create the account and redeem the code locked on L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Also brought to you by FanDuel and the FanDuel Sportsbook app. And get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, March is right around the corner, sir. Are you getting in March Madness mode, or is he still a couple weeks away before that? No, my Auburn Tigers are March Madness bound. I've, mm. I've got the fever. My Michigan Wolverines are not. <laughs> <laughs> They're not even NIT bound this year. So, <laughs> uh, Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. All right, we're going to talk about Kale McCarr again because we never do that. Um, he, get, he finally breaks the all-time defenseman points record for the franchise, uh, passing Tyson Berry. So he is officially at 307 points, 78 goals, 229 assists. That's 307 points. He's a plus 97 on his career in 292 games. Um, it's tough to really kind of, you know, come up with more words or phrases to describe Kale McCarr. Uh, but he's 25 years old. And he already holds the franchise record for defensive points. Yeah. You it, let's just hope for the best. And he and he plays his entire career with the Avalanche. And you get that impression that that he will. He you just feel like he's built that way. You just feel like he he's a loyal customer, and and he he's appreciative to the team that drafted him. And unless the Avalanche for some reason down the road don't want him anymore, um. You know, when, when he's only got a couple years left and they're like, yeah, you know, go, and they're not good or something like that. And you gotta go go find another team, maybe win a, a one more cup before your career is over. But that's like 
12 or 13 years in the future, Kyle. Yeah. And even if it's that, if it's another 12, say it's he's 25 years old. It's not unreasonable to think he could play until he's 40 years old. So let's say he's got another 15 years of of distance. Every goal he scores from now on, he is padding that record. If he plays his entire career for the Avalanche, I don't think anybody comes even close to what Kale McCarr is going to do by the end of his career. It's scary. No. Yeah, and Kale feels like a lifer, and you mentioned like he's 25, but it feels like two years ago he made his debut versus Calgary in the playoffs, and the way he plays, and when he's on his game and he's going 100%, it feels like he's 31-32 with the decisions he makes and just the poise and just the calmness that he handles it. Mm -hmm. And like you said, like he passed Tyson Berry, doesn't hurt my feelings at all, and everything he does from here on out, it's house money. This is his. This is his record, yeah. and he gets to cement his legacy. It's not just like he gets to be – you get to dictate your story and how you're remembered in Colorado Avalanche history with this. Like he's already won a cup with the Avalanche. He's – and he he could just – he could sit here and continue on knowing this is a record that's not going to be touched because that Tyson Berry, you looked at it for a while, and you thought mm. this is going to stick for – and you you look back in history. At Avalanche defenseman, and you say how Tyson Berry is still holding this record compared to everybody before him, and now Kale's passed it with ease, and he's mm. going to continue to do so. This is going to be a record that stays for honestly, this might be an untouchable one. You think so? I mean, there's if someone breaks it, like that person has not been born yet. Yeah, you know what I mean. So yeah. because nobody's taking his spot right now on this on this roster, so that 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 is that is a human being that is uh, that that hasn't come into this world. Yeah. So it, it, there's always a possibility. I mean, a lot of people were thinking, you know, the the Gretzky goal record would could never be broken. That's still up in the air if it will. I mean, Ovechkin's getting close. But after Ovechkin, I don't know if we're going to have anybody that even comes close to it. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. rare. So it, I'll never say never, but I'll I'll say darn near impossible uh, for someone to, to and and it's not only that. It's not only the 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 points that he's going to have for this franchise. It's all the hardware that comes with it. Yeah. And and you 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 know you touched on the Stanley Cup, but you know obviously he's already got the the Calder for Rookie of the Year. He's got a Norris. He's got a Con Smythe. You know. He's probably going to get more Norris trophies. Can never guarantee a Stanley Cup, but when he's the best defenseman in the league, playing on a on one of the top teams, he's always got an opportunity to win another cup or two. Hopefully, we've we've said it before, but you know, when it when it's all said and done, which is crazy to talk about now because he's twenty five years old, we have all this time left. Um, where he will stand in the hierarchy of best defenseman i'm i'm anxious to see that I'm, I'm i'm kind of excited to see when it's all said and done again it's crazy to say that uh where kale mccarr is on on, on that list uh because he's gonna be up there he's gonna be up there and you mentioned the norris but we did the heart rankings the locked yeah. on network heart rankings and guess who's his name creeps in there it, it's it, once well, honestly the next couple years the more he refines his game and he accomplishes different little accolades because he's again just he's just going for what he wants now. He's already got mm -hmm. that cup in the bag. He's got the Norris. You only get one chance at the Calder. Got that too. So he's he's just racking up what he wants right now. And next year could be his motivation to go for the heart. And then you could have that mm -hmm. Norris heart conversation every other year. Like that's the luxury yeah. and the talent that Kale McCarr brings to this team, and he, it might we're talking about greatest Avalanche defenseman being Kale McCarr. Mm -hmm. When it's all said and done, when he's already come into the league with legendary peer status, I'm very curious to see where he <laughs> goes down all time defenseman. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, he he was. I mean, I know it's. Early, when it's early in the season and people are talking about like MVPs and stuff like that, you take it with a grain of salt, but he was, he was in that mix. And then Nathan McKinnon decided to just go off and kind of just take that title 
at least for for this year, kind of pulled it away from from McCarr. And McCarr has been faltering a little bit in, in in the past month. Everybody in Avalanche did. You know, it was a bad month of February. But um, you know, that's just a hiccup. It's just it's just a speed bump for him. So um, he's exciting to watch. Yeah, I think you know it, it's. I, what else does he he? Right now, it's just adding on to things. He's he's gotten and he's taken in everything that so many guys work a career to accomplish in awards and Stanley Cups and and franchise records, and and he's he's done it by the age of twenty five. It's insane. It's insane to think about. And you know, it's been fun to watch McKinnon and Kucherov go back and forth on this race for the heart. Imagine. If Nathan McKinnon finishes the race, wins the heart next mm-hmm. year, we get to have this competition every single avalanche game between Nathan McKinnon and Kale McCarr. Nathan McKinnon won the heart. Now it's Kale's turn, and they get to compete back and forth on that's going to be mm. a fun dynamic because you know they like to elevate their game and they both have that same competitive drive. Yeah. It's going to raise the pressure for Kale McCarr. Next year will be fun. I agree. All right, uh, let's hear from our subtext people. A little bit more to get to on, on the game. And, of course, our sound check, which will all be coming up next. First, let's just hear from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything that you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED lights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, which we know as the what is it, Kyle? The Nathan McKinnon Trilogy. eBay Motors has got you covered with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts that you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home the win Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com because eligible items are only and exclusions do apply because eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. All right, before we head into uh, the subtext, people just want to remind everybody that Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And, and it's also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked on Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local sports of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. And you can find Locked On Sports Today now available on on the free Fire TV channels app. And like we said, on YouTube as well. Check it out. Pretty cool feature we got over there. Mm -hmm. Um, All right, let's hear from our subtext people we got a couple of them here weighing in late into the uh, night here electrician ziggy our very favorite electrician um abs a bit actually if he's an electrician i think i heard the power went out in the philly game yeah oddly enough the flyers and lightning game was delayed after the lights and video board and sound system cut off due to an in arena outage so electrician ziggy uh make your ziggy. way over there you on call ziggy uh he says abs a bit sloppy with the puck in the first i totally agree with that uh but turns it around for a huge win special teams looked good on both ends of the ice also glad to see the abs win a game against a team who was uh, really heavy on the forecheck exactly what i was saying in the beginning uh which seems to be weakness of ours uh and he uh, he wishes me a happy belated birthday as well so uh, everything you said there was absolutely genius yep especially that last part I, I completely agree. And yeah, that has been a weakness. We talked about it in sure. the Devils game and so many matchups to see the Avalanche come on the other side of that and get two points out of one of yep. those one of those teams that play them that way. I agree with Ziggy. Yep. Um Vargar, great all around 60 minutes. Uh a few years back, I wanted the Avs to sign Hockenpah uh mm-hmm. in the offseason, and he ended up in Dallas because he said he wanted to play with uh, his fellow countrymen. Tonight, it was the Avs Thins who really got the game going in the right direction. That's true. I didn't even put the, that together. Yep. <laughs> He's right. Uh, I could complain about the power play, but I won't. Um, The first well, one was good. Like, the last one was atrocious. 
Yeah, they only had two, right? Yeah. Yeah. For, for first, two. but but the first one wasn't even that good. I don't think they, no. they got lucky because uh, Dallas was, you know, maybe Dallas committed too much to uh, like an odd man rush for them being shorthanded. They turned it over. The Avs just had numbers on the way back, and it was kind of like a fluky play. So, um, but the second I'll, one that was later in the game that didn't look too good. Yeah. No, I, I will never. I'll never excuse wins and goals. If you convert on the power play, I don't care what it looks like. As long yeah. as it goes in, let's right. go. Yep. Um, Amy says, wow, it felt really good to be in control of a game. Uh, good game from Georgie. This was a much needed win. Um, let's talk about Georgie, uh, uh, Alexander Georgiev because uh, I, I, he, he was good. He was good. I, I, you know, where, where does the shots on goal? It's over 30, 34 shots on goal Dallas had. 971 save percentage. Say for, it again for people in the back, Kyle. 971. Wow. I, I've been sitting on that this entire episode. I love throwing out those stats. And when and Georgie, he had great, it was a good game. He's yeah. been getting better. He's been finding confidence. I understand it's one of those kind of like how the game finished, like a goal on the first shot of the game sure why not mm -hmm. but that was it that was it and then after that he he locked it down the pressure was on he was in the right spot right time hey dallas 0 for 2 on the power play so he stopped two of those that's it was a great and, game by Igor. And, and they have a good power play they do they, they have a good power play they, and they have offense you know they can score <laughs> that, that it's a good team it Dallas is. is obviously a good team. So um to, to shut them down, yeah. Like you said, first first goal uh uh or first shot on goal of the game uh into a rookie nonetheless. Okay. You got me, Rook. And then yep. the rest of it was was shut down. So uh he had to come up big with some saves and and he did. He absolutely did. So um I, I think overall you have to be happy with this game. You have to be happy with it. So now you you have to continue this because you go into Chicago and lay an egg, and this game means nothing. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> nothing. So um, continue it. That that that's that's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah. And you and you saw ESPN put up the stat like the Avalanche have a three percent chance of winning the Central. How's that feel? You know, ESPN goes a little bit crazy with this, these percentages and stuff like but that, and and I don't even know where they come up with that stuff. They're 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 one game, or excuse me, they're they're one point behind Dallas right now with a game in hand. And but it's 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 one of those like I know ESPN kind of gets crazy with their stats yeah. and how they cite them. But when's the last time Avalanche fans have had to feel that? Look at percentages of that nature. Like, know you're behind. Yeah. And you have to really fight. Not just we're not talking for the the Western Conference. We're talking the Central, right? Like, yeah. It, but I wonder how much of of um, <laughs> I'm kind of like semi laughing about this. I wonder how much of of that number uh, they take into account the Avalanche caring. That's true. You know what I mean? Like, I genuinely don't think the Avalanche care if if they if they go out and, and, and win the division sure they want to and and they're going to try to but if they don't they're still gonna have the same mindset going into the playoffs like okay here we go like th this is where our season starts we've done all this before we've we've won the division we've won the president's trophy we've won the stanley cup so we know what it entails to do all that and and and, and make a push in the playoffs if we win the division great if we don't we're still going to have the same mindset going into the playoffs. Is this where I start citing the 2019 St. Louis Blues? Right. Sure. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, all right. Last bit of business we got to get to. And that is, of course, our Locked on Avalanche sound check. Kyle and I pick one song each that we feel best summarizes the most recent game. Put these songs up on a playlist over on Spotify, which you can follow. Just search for LOA sound check. And this is volume number three. So what do you got for the Avs and the Dallas Stars? And when the dogs are looking for their bones and it's raining ice picks on your steel shore, I'm going to break 
I'm gonna break my I'm gonna break my rusty cage and run. Oh my god. Oh, you're the best. It's yeah. The the Avs broke out of their rusty cage, got out of their yes. losing streak. I guess a superior quality opponent, and they are back in their winning ways. Sound garden. Now, are are you doing the sound garden? Okay, I was gonna say, are you doing the sound garden version or or the Johnny? Because I know you're a Johnny Cash fan. So uh, I'm a big Johnny it. Cash fan, but there right. is nothing like that riff of the sound garden version. Uh uh that is. Uh, I I could listen to. to well, I do. <laughs> yeah, I, I was. Boy, so. <laughs> and why I led with the lyrics? I wanted to see how long it would take. To yes. Click. God, oh man, so good. That was my birthday gift to you. Thank you. <laughs> you picked a uh, Chris Cornell Soundgarden song just for me. I appreciate it. Um, I'm I'm kind of going not not the same, no work, not even the same genre of music, believe it or not. Uh, but kind of going off of the day that you know, yeah, it was it was my birthday. Obviously, that is always an enjoyable day for anyone that that is having a birthday. Uh, and then when your team plays on your birthday and when that team plays well and they win and everything is good, it makes you happy. Just plain and simple, happy. So Pharrell Williams from the Despicable Me 2 soundtrack uh, and the song is simply happy. Everybody knows it. And and that's that's where we am right now. Come on that's, now. That's such Perfect. a like it's such a. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I, I, I love that you picked that song because that's one of those songs that everybody hears or hears of and they're like, oh, that song. But then it starts and it puts you immediately in a vibe. I don't think you can hate it. It's I, I don't think I don't care what genre of music you, you like. Uh you, you could be a, a death metal fan and, and that song is uh it gets you in a good mood. So I put that in Weapon of Choice by Fat Boy Slim, both uh like, well that was, video is epic. Oh, epic it's, video. It's, so it's, good. This makes you so happy. <laughs> All right. Uh, that is going to wrap it up for today, everybody. Thank you for tuning in, making it your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. We'll be back tomorrow with anything new going on in Avalanche Nation. So make sure you are signed up and subscribe to our subtext to get your thoughts read on the air. All right. He's Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan. I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche podcast. We'll see everybody tomorrow.